Hello there again. Thanks for joining us this week as we explore the fascinating story of the richest man ever in the world. Just like every other human being, Mansa Musa Beth was real. He was born in the early 14th century in the Kingdom of Mali located in West Africa. Due to the civilization of the period, his exact birth date is not known but it's believed to be around 1280 AD. As a child, he received an education befitting a prince learning about religion, lore and the arts. Mansa Musa came to power in 1312. At the period, Mali was already a prosperous kingdom known for its rich resources, particularly gold and salt. But as an industrious leader, Mansa took Mali to a greater height of power and wealth during his reign. Mansa Musa understood the importance of trade and commerce in enhancing the growth of his kingdom. He implemented policies that encouraged both domestic and international trade. He fostered strong relationships with neighboring states and distant empires. One of Mansa Musa's key economic strategies was the promotion of Mali's abundant resources, particularly gold and salt. He invested in infrastructures such as roads and bridges to facilitate the transportation of these valuable commodities to markets both within Mali and beyond its borders. He introduced a stable and efficient taxation system to fund his ambitious project and ensure the prosperity of his kingdom. He imposed taxes on trade, agriculture and property but did so in a way that did not burden his subject excessively. Mansa Musa is also the table for encouraging innovation and entrepreneurship within Mali. He supported artisans, craftsmen and merchants providing them with opportunities to thrive and contribute to the kingdom's economic growth. Under Mansa Musa's visionary leadership, Mali became a center of learning and culture, attracting scholars, poets, and artists from far and wide. This intellectual vibrancy furthered world economic development and cemented Mali's reputation as a beacon of civilization in Africa. While Mansa Musa is often celebrated for his wealth and economic policies, his reign as the ruler of Mali was also marked by strategic military campaigns aimed at reclaiming lost territories and expanding the borders of his kingdom. Upon his ascension to the throne in 1312, Mansa Musa inherited an empire that had faced territorial losses and challenges from neighboring state and rival factions. In his determination to restore Mali's former glory, he embarked on a series of military campaigns to reclaim lost territories and assert his authority. Mansa Musa's military strategy was characterized by a combination of diplomacy, alliances and decisive military action. He forged alliances with neighboring states strengthening Mali's position and garnering support for his campaigns. One of Mansa Musa's most notable military victories came in 1324, when he successfully conquered the city of Gao, a key trading center situated along the Niger River. This strategic conquest not only expanded Mali's territory but also secured control over vital trade routes. Mansa Musa's military campaigns were not only aimed at territorial expansion but also at defending Mali from external threats. He repelled invasions from rival kingdoms and nomadic tribes, safeguarding Mali's borders and ensuring the security of his people. His military successes allowed him to consolidate his rule over the diverse region and ethnic groups within Mali. He established a centralized administration, appointed loyal governors, 
and implemented policies to promote unity and stability throughout the kingdom. Mansa Musa became extremely noticeable during his pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324. It was a journey without a precedent in history. Mansa showcased his wealth and the splendor of Mali to the world while on this journey. According to historians and some Arab writers from the era, it was recorded that Mansa Musa went on this pilgrimage with a caravan of 60,000 men in his company with his loyal court officials, soldiers, entertainers, merchants, hundreds of commerce and 12,000 slaves. It was believed that most of his entourage was carrying 136 kilograms of gold each. It was a city moving across the desert. On his way to Mecca, he stayed in Cairo visiting the Sultan of Egypt at the time. It was recorded that his three-month stay in Egypt brought about the crash of Egypt's economy. His caravan spent and gave away so much gold that the gold value decreased in Egypt for over 10 years after his visit. The effect of his visit to Cairo was later mentioned by Al-Umari, who visited Egypt 12 years after Mansa had been to Egypt. People were still talking about the experience he brought to their kingdom. He gave out so much gold that some believe he had spent too much and so he ran out of gold. Lucy Duran of the School of African and Oriental Studies in London notes that Malian Groit, who are singing historian storytellers, in particular were upset with him. In her words, she said, He gave out so much Malian gold along the way. The Jalis, who are also the Groit, don't like to praise him in their songs because they think it wasted local resources outside the empire. Beyond his pilgrimage, Masa Musa is also remembered for his contributions to education, architecture and the arts. During his reign, Masa Musa is notable for embarking on large building construction projects. He raised mosques and madrasas in Tobuktu and Gao. He is also responsible for the construction of Sankori Madrasa, which is an ancient center of learning. Tobuktu became a major Islamic university center during his reign in the 14th century. Masa Musa brought architects and scholars from various Islamic countries into Mali and this grew the reputation of his kingdom. At the time, Mali became prosperous and gained attention of the world. Masa Musa died in 1337 at the age of 57 and his sons inherited his throne. However, his sons could not rule Mali with the same level of diplomacy and intelligence he showed. Eventually, the kingdom fell apart. The smaller state in the empire broke off and the empire crumbled. With the arrival of the Europeans, the empire could not be rebuilt. Mansa Musa's legacy is entrenched in the annals of history. He is remembered for his wealth, promotion of scholarship and Islamic faith. We will stop here this week on the history of the greatest man ever in the world. Join this conversation by sharing your opinion. Thank you for watching. This is African History TV.